Hey there, everybody. My name is Saurabh, and I create free video content on data engineering. And you are watching a quick tutorial on how to create custom Airflow operators. Now, at this point, I assume that you have worked with a few Airflow operators. Now, don't get me wrong. The available off-the-shelf operators are good. However, they don't fit a specific use case that you got. And you wish that this operator could actually solve the specific problem that you got. Look, Look no, no further, further, because in this video, we will take an available Airflow operator and customize it to suit our very special need. Now, what do I exactly mean by customize an operator? Well, we will add a new supporting feature, some additional functionality to an existing operator. And we will achieve it by leveraging a very common mechanism in object-oriented programming called inheritance. Let's check out how that can actually be done. <laughs> Let's set the scene by sharing my screen. Now, I want to copy a file from S3 to a Postgres database. So let's go check out the Postgres operator documentation. So let me go and open it up here. Okay, and here, I want to quickly scan the capabilities of the Postgres operator. Okay, so what am I seeing here? So I'm seeing that I can create a Postgres table. What else? I can insert data to a Postgres table. Okay, very good, wonderful. What else? I can fetch records from a Postgres table and I can pass parameters like this for example okay that's fine pass configuration parameters as well and looks like that's it so that is all I can do so that means if I want to do something like this assuming this is my task definition so it's a Postgres operator I pass the task ID the SQL and the connection idle it'll run but what if what if I wanted to pass three extra parameters to it like for example the full S3 key the Postgres table name and the AWS connection ID so that it will pick up the file in the full S3 key location and insert it to the Postgres table name. Will it be able to do that? No, it cannot. Absolutely not. It will just not work. But we will make it work. Yep, we are going to create our very own personalized Postgres operator and I'm going to call it my Postgres operator. So the very first step to do is to create a custom operator in the plugins directory. So let me go to my plugins directory. There it is. So as you can see, I've already created one here. Let's look at the operator definition now. At line 10, line 10 is very important. So line 10 is saying my operator should inherit the Postgres operator. So that means my operator, my Postgres operator is a child class of the Postgres operator, which means I want my Postgres operator to have all the capabilities of the Postgres operator. And of course, there would be some additional capabilities too. Now, what are those additional capabilities? Well, those are defined in the execute function down here, which we'll look at in a bit. Now, a bit about the execute function. Now, every Airflow operator has an execute function. It's the function that runs when any operator runs. So if you run any operator, it would run its execute function. We also need to create an init function. Init is short for initialize. Now, it behaves just like any other Python init function. So the init function runs when we invoke an object of a Python class, and in this case, my Postgres operator is a Python class. Now let's quickly check out what's happening in the init function. And the very first thing I'm doing here is I'm calling the init function of the parent class, right? Now, because I want my operator to have all the capabilities of the Postgres operator. And the second thing that I'm doing here is passing the values of the extra parameters, which are these three, right? Full S3 key, it was connection ID and Postgres table name. Now this is needed for it to support the extra functionality that we want to build, right? Now let's look at the execute function. So I have an if statement where I'm saying if the extra parameters PG table name and the full S3 key are not none, or that means if they're populated, then go ahead and copy the file. I mean, download the file from S3 and copy it into Postgres here. Now this entire code snippet in the if block is exactly the same as what we looked at in the previous video. So I'm not going to walk through this code again. Cool. So that's the if and what's happening in the else? Well, it's just calling 
the execute function of the parent class so super dot execute so which means give me all the capabilities of the postgres operator basically right well i hope that made sense now let's go to the ui okay i see my dag here let's click on it and if i go to the graph view so okay so now i see a new task and what type of task is this as you can see it's my postgres operator it's not the regular postgres operator it's my postgres operator right so now let's run this dag boom okay it ran successfully wonderful right let's go actually go check in the table if, if it at all inserted any data or not run it please yep it did okay now wait wait, wait. so we are not done yet <laughs> we are not done yet so so now we know my postgres operator works but does it actually have all the capabilities of the regular postgres operator as well well let's find out and how can we do that let's write an extra task at the end so i do actually have it here just to save time you know i want to save your time i'm all about saving time so this one so let me uncomment this, this task is validate sql my postgres operator i give it a task id of ytpg test and then it's just doing a select right so now let's see if this one works so i should see a new task in my dag come on there is a new task is here if i go to the graph view it is another my postgres operator right so let's run this and the third task was successful let's go look at the logs of the third task boom yeah it did run it successfully so that means our operator has all the capabilities of the regular postgres operator going back to our class definition yeah we did not write any code to execute any sql statement right but it still executed sql statements in the very last task as we saw right so how did that happen well my friend that's the power of inheritance because in this case what happened is when we ran the task the execute function was running and it skipped the ifs block and it went to else so that's why it ran the regular postgres operators code and that'll be it for this video i really hope that you found this video to be useful now if there's something that didn't make sense or if you think that there's something i could have explained at a greater depth then do let me know in the comment section otherwise i'll see you in the next one where we will learn about how to trigger a DAG from another DAG using the trigger DAG run operator. Yep, a very useful concept explained in five minutes. Click here to watch it now. If not, I'll see you whenever the YouTube algorithm wants me to meet you. Peace.